if you really broke down each of the groups and looked at like the stereotypes or what everybody thinks of them, it's going to be you know the white guy with cigarettes rolled up in his sleeve, and he's going to be like the VA guy, and there's going to be like the little little Asian gangster type with the big spiked hair and everything. There's definitely a rivalry between domestic guys and import guys on a couple of different levels. It's interesting that among our readership, I've got a big group of people who are nothing but muscle car. They never want to see a Japanese car in their life. They don't care about it. Those same guys typically don't care about a domestic front wheel drive turbo car either. It's faster than some of these Jap things. <laughs> no shit. A lot faster. The difference now is that sport compacts and domestics is not just a matter of of hot riding a car, it's really a culture clash. It's a lifestyle situation. And I think that's what our muscle car guys hate about the import crowd. They don't like cars that have extreme wings that aren't really functional. Lots of graphics that are kind of tasteless in their view. Neon lights, which is, you know, again, tacky in the view of a traditional muscle car guy. And cars that have all that junk on them, but don't perform and they go along with a lifestyle of sort of the you know import model crowd and hot import nights and that type of vibe that our older domestic guys they just don't get it and they don't like it yeah you definitely feel it and, and, and the track they don't say it to you but you can you know they're checking you out and then, well, what are you doing here and then until you line up and they lose and they get really embarrassed mm. <laughs> yeah. such a thing as front wheel drive. We had no idea. It's a new generation. I mean, a lot of people have no idea what a front wheel drive car can do, or at least, well, in general, a small displacement engine can do. So it's not so much about how big your engine is, how well the car is set up and balanced. It's, it's a little different now. There's a lot more science to it these, these days. It's different. You know, you, know you, got, you got the muscle car, hot rod type of guys, which is most of the people here. And then you have uh, the, what do you want to call them, rice rockets? A whole different generation. I think it's cool either way. You know, it's just what your preference is. It's interesting. I see muscle car guys being a lot more vehemently opposed to import guys than I do import guys being opposed to muscle car guys. I went to the street races once and I talked to this kid and he hates hot rods. How can you hate hot rods? That's the fucking roots of the whole game. That's the roots. You can't hate the roots, man. That's where it all came from. He's like, I fucking hate those push rods. Fuck the big A's. I know nothing about them. It's all about fucking Acuras and B16. Fuck you. If you want to build a 12 second car, there is no question that it's going to be cheaper in the long run to build a V8 car. You can go buy a five liter Mustang for 3,500 bucks and, and, you know, tool a few parts on it over a weekend and it's a 12 second car. Whereas you pretty much have to throw a turbo on a Civic to get there or huge nitrous or a lot of compression. You take every import magazine out there and add up their total circulation and it doesn't add up to what Hot Rod Magazine is alone. And then you combine Chevy High Performance and popular hot rodding muscle Mustangs and all these other domestic titles, you realize that the domestic marketplace is still much bigger than the import marketplace. It's just that the import thing is the big blip on the radar screen right now. I think it's way cheaper to build a uh, to build a compact performance car because if you look at uh, 